Hello and welcome to this video in which I built and paint this kit from Itellery. It is the tractor from Steyr, Ropenschlepper Ost or the RSO1 in 135th scale. I, I went to Militrek this year, um, a gathering in the Netherlands uh, where there were a lot of World War II German vehicles and I saw this tractor and I knew I had to uh, search for this kit. It's from 1981. It was a fairly simple kit, easy build. Some parts were a little bent and the tracks were not that good. They were a little bit of a problem, but I got there in the end with a lot of epoxy. But a lot of fun to make and paint. Let's build. This is the base of the tractor. This is the part uh, which was very bent, as you can see here. Uh, but this is the top of the chassis and I could glue it and push it in place um, so there was no problem in the end. This is the gear assembly. There was one axle uh, missing where the wheel uh, had to go. Um, so I found out that the sprues had the same diameter as that part, three millimeters. So I used it, so that was fixed. Two weeks later, I found it, the part uh, between some books on my desk, um, but this worked. the exhaust which is on the outside of the tractor always nice to have some rusty bits uh, on the outside of the vehicle there was no hole in the um, in the exhaust so I drilled it out Onto the cabin. The cabin had not many parts. Well, the, the whole kit did not have many parts. And this seat was really loose. So what I did is glue them in place uh, while the cabin sat on top. So the, so the angle of the backrest was correct. simple like a box construction there was already a lot of detail molded into these parts they went together quite easily and I like that these parts already have a lot of detail otherwise in another kit you would have a lot of photo edge parts and I don't really like putting on those fiddly parts 
So I was really pleased with these simple but rather detailed molded parts. really fiddly bits especially how they um, had to come together so what I did is I taped it in place uh, and there's one part that goes over the top one bar in the middle and I glued that in place so I could later pull out the whole construction and not have to leave it there um, because the chances of me breaking or bending these parts was very great. Okay, on to primer. I primed it in Tamiya uh, Surface Primer Grey. And next I sprayed it with dark yellow as a base coat for the whole vehicle. And because I don't have an airbrush, the rest of the painting had to be done by brush which I like, by the way. I really like painting effects in small parts. You see me here painting the first, or this is the second layer of paint. I usually come back a few times, so the parts have a good coverage of paint. Onto the oil wash, I used that to give some highlights and some color bleaching like these chairs have faded colors from the sun. And now a brown oil wash to make the cabin really dirty. It's always funny when I see the oil wash back in the montage. I usually start out doing a pin wash, but soon after it becomes a, more like a filter. So the whole cabin gets really dirty. Then some really small instruments in the cabin. I did a dry brush with white to highlight the, the circles on the dash. Also use the brown oil wash to make the cabin really dirty. 
and here I used some varnish, gloss varnish, to create a glass effect on the dials. Always a nice simple effect um, and almost always you will never see it again when the cabin is closed. Just like an airplane cockpit instruments which you will never see again. Here I'm painting the exhaust, rather sloppy, with some brown and later on this will get various coats of brown tints and rust enamels and soot. This was a little bit of a disaster. I thought I could dry brush on the wood grain effect, but I was totally not happy with the effect it gave me. Afterwards I would be going back with the dark yellow and a heavy brown wash to make it more wood looking. painting the metal parts and chipping off the paint on the corners. I actually don't know what this part is, but I Imagine it is some kind of a um, bumper on the side. I really don't know. But in the color scheme I made on the computer, this was a really good part to bring back the color I will be using for the cabin, the yellow. This is the brown oil wash to fix the white dry brush disaster. Here you can see the other yellow part, the, the engine cover, I believe, I made yellow. And also the doors will become yellow. On the driver's side I had the idea of lowering the window in the door. So I put some tape on it so I could uh, draw a line how low the window should go where I had to cut off the window with my razor blade. This is what it will look like in the end. Decals is always a fun part in the 
in the build for me. I really like the effect of these crisp details making the model look more realistic. So usually I put on more decals than there are in the kit itself. I usually put on more decals than there are in the color schemes that are in the instruction manual. I just go to town with the decals. I actually should have put these on before I did the brown wash so they would be made filthy just like the rest of the cabin and in this case I did that afterwards. I went back with the brown oil wash to make them blend in with the rest of the cabin. details in the cabin and drinking bottle and the binoculars and the helm on the passenger seat. to the terrible tracks. They were from rubber and in the instruction manual they said you have to close the ends, get a heated screwdriver and melt two pins down so the track will stay closed in the loop. Uh, that did not go well because as, as you can see here in this shot the end there should have been um, a small lip uh, but it broke off, so I had to glue that part with epoxy. Same procedure as the tracks themselves, getting some mud on the vehicle.
you can see the ends of the track where a part broke off. So I had to fix this with epoxy and I taped it on a block so it would remain in position. The bond was really not that great and I had to use a lot more epoxy to get the tracks stay on the wheels and get a little bit of a sag of the track. vehicle here on the cabin. And here I'm blending the edges in with a dry brush. time I had the idea to really stuff the back full with stowage. I had painted a lot of stowage, uh, large crates and tins and blankets, um, but in the end I've decided to just put these two objects in the back to keep it simple. And here I'm using some charcoal for some soot effects on the um, exhaust and on the outside of the cargo bed.
this is the final result of the Steer Ropen Schlepper Ost. I really like the vehicle and the simplicity of the kit and I had a lot of fun painting it. I hope you liked the video and I hope to see you next time. Bye! Doei!